I sometimes wonder if people tune into their first episode of the Morinoko and think, hmm, I wonder if they start every episode like this. This episode of the Morinoko will, in fact, be a bit different than other episodes. This time I'm speaking with my good friend Jordan Zenardelli, a resident of Aurora, Colorado. We will get into some of Jordan and I's backstory, but we've known each other for over eight years now. We discuss Jordan's journey to Colorado and his interesting new role at work. After that, we play a game of questions in which we have no clue about what the other person is going to ask us. It being Halloween time, stick around if you dare. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the intro. It's done. Yep. That's what I'm used to. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to keep that, but we might. So here's like a five minute in introduction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we are sitting in the home of Jordan Zanardelli. Hello. Also known as Xander Delicious. Yes. Well, that's just my social media because I thought it was funny. It's excellent. Well, you <laughs> you are actually really good at coming up with social media names because I've in the time I've known you, you've come up with like 10 witty names based off your last name or combination. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot you can do with Deli because there's a lot of things around with Ellie. But uh, I think the, what, in terms of being creative with different names... The thing I'm most proud of is some of my fantasy football team names mm. I've come up with over the years. What, yeah, what are some examples? Um, let's see. I always like to do it based on a player on my team uh, rather than just grab one out of thin air. So um, there's been a breezy, beautiful cover girl. Pretty <laughs> proud of that one. Um, that one got a few laughs. Uh, Let me gronk on your donk. That's <laughs> another favorite of mine. Um, let's see. There's also... Back in when I was in college, we I had Adrian Peterson's Bushy Johnson because I had uh, Adrian Peterson, Reggie Bush, and Chris Johnson all on the same team, and it worked beautifully. So those are some good ones I have. Um, right now I have Juju Smith Schuster, and so my team name is uh, Shoes and Ladders. Ooh, yeah. I like so that. yeah, not not as dirty as some of the other <laughs> ones I've had. This not one's you, a little more clean. Not your usual repertoire. Yeah, but uh, I thought it was funny, and you know who else probably has a team name based on the child game of shoots and ladders right so yeah anyway sometimes when i'm looking for fantasy names i have no creativity and i go out there and look and see i'll just type like fantasy name with this person and mm-hmm. see what i find so yeah. this year it's not that great i have russell wilson as my quarterback and so my team name is russell and feathers russell and feathers yeah. i like it. it's i mean it's not bad it's creative Sorta. nobody i mean but i don't think anybody else in the world is going to have the name Russell and Feathers as their fantasy football team name. Because <laughs> it's that not, bad. Not, <laughs> not in a bad way. I think it's creative. Yeah. Russell and Feathers. So we are in Jordan's home in Aurora. And some people are thinking, what the hell? <laughs> Aurora? Where's that? Well, it's East Denver, if you don't know. And we're in, uh, we're in East Central Aurora. And mm. the second question they're saying is, now hold on just a minute. That's <laughs> not Northern Colorado. Well, no, it is not. that's all right. Because sometimes, uh, well, let's see, I'm the host, so I get to do what I want, first True. of all. And I don't want to limit interesting and educational content to just Northern Colorado if it happens to be outside. But if you tune in for an episode of The More You Know Co., you might want to, uh, if you're looking for an educational experience, you might uh, hop on over to another episode. Cause <laughs> we, we might dub this The Less You Know Co., because we're yes. gonna have now, we are gonna have some fun on today's episode, but it yes, may not are. necessarily. You won't be learning from an entrepreneur like maybe some of the other episodes. No, I do not have my own business or anything like that. Uh, I sometimes make silly videos for friends to watch, and uh, no, and I don't know that much about Northern Colorado either. Besides the occasional times I've gone up to to visit Buster up there, yeah, oh yeah, um, which I'm sure they don't know you as. Buster. No, they don't. They Nobody know knows Ivan. that. Um, so, uh, Buster, I, I've known, I've had the pleasure of knowing Buster for a while now. Um, eight years. Eight years. Yeah, yeah. eight years uh, since since we both were at Oklahoma State together. And when I was first introduced to him, um, his he went by his childhood nickname of Buster, mm. um, which correct me if I'm wrong, but the story is that one of your family members was like, "Well, that's one Buster of a baby," and then. Yeah, so in the womb, I grew so fast, they thought I was going to be twins. <laughs> and when they found out I wasn't going to be twins, my dad's friend was like, that's going to be one buster of a boy. <laughs> and so they, he called me Buster from the time I was born. And the way my mom tells it is by my third birthday, I said, I'm not going by Ivan. I'm going to go by Buster. 
And so I went by the nickname of Buster through high school. So if at any point you hear Jordan reference Buster, that is Ivan. Yes. That's me. We are one and the same. And I do try to call him Ivan, but sometimes it's just so difficult. Hey, no need. It's just... As a teacher that I used to work with said, uh, you can call me anything, just don't call me late to supper. <laughs> Well, that's true, because you do have quite the appetite. <laughs> <laughs> and I always thought that was funny, and then I use that joke, and it always flatlines with people. They're like, oh, hilarious. Well, I do, uh, with the people that you share that joke with, do they know about your, just, the appetite that you have, and you're always craving for food? Probably not. So it's probably not as, as a salient of a joke <laughs> for them. So I want to get into Jordan's journey to Colorado. You yes. are the dreaded recent transplant to yes, Colorado. Yes, I'm one of those people that when I worked at Sierra Trading Post for a little bit when I first moved here, they would talk to, talk to me about all the people moving here and all these people need to get out of here. And I'd be like, I know. I'm not one of them, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> but you were. But I was. So you moved here in May of 2017. Yes, and, I did. And what is your current role here in Denver? I uh, currently am uh, a talent acquisition coordinator for Red Robin. Uh, Red Robin's corporate office here in Denver, Colorado. And I didn't know that Red Robin was stationed here. Uh, their home base is in Denver. Yes, yes, they are. Yes, um, Red Robin originated in uh, Washington, but uh, yeah, their home offices are here, our test kitchen's here, all the CEOs here. I walk by her every day. It's, it's weird working in a corporate office where I walk by the CEO every day versus working in a retail store and never talking to anybody that was important. Mm. You know, so it's, it's a weird transition to be in. But very cool, very cool. Yeah, and you're talking about the amount of free food that you get. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's awesome working for a company in the restaurant industry because we test stuff all the time, and we're trying new things all the time. And uh, so a lot of that involves not only testing our own stuff, but also uh, testing out competing, you know, competitors within the with uh, with Red Robin within the restaurant industry. So we get food delivered all the time, and it's very tough to turn down free food, uh, especially when, for example, the floor I work on has all the conference rooms where usually the big meetings are held and the food isn't there. So it's very close by, very hard to turn down. And yeah. you said sometimes it's even required. They yeah. ask you to try it. And mm -hmm. do you have like a, a survey sheet you're filling out for this? Or? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's not like uh, it's not like we fill out a survey and then we like give it back to the people. I mean, it's more for, for us. So, you know, like uh, we had a big HR meeting and then we went out and just tried other competitors. And, you know, we kind of had like a, a you know, notes we were taking to ourselves of different things we we're looking for, um, how they interacted with their guests or if we we're doing to-go ordering, how they presented everything or if we we're doing catering. You know, we'll look at uh, what they do versus what mm. we do. Um, what? Not to necessarily copy by any means, but how can we make it Red Robin and then work that out into better service the guests. What is Red Robin's like direct top competitors? Really anything that's casual dining. So, mm. I mean, you could it can range from um, even like what people might even consider fast food to like Qdoba, Chipotle. Um, Chili's? Yeah, Chili's. Applebee's. Applebee's. I mean, anything that you can kind of has every aspect of the casual dining experience from dining in to, to go to catering to ordering online and having it delivered so how let's let's get into the the meat and potatoes here <laughs> how did you end up in aurora colorado well first off um, i had great friends like yourself that mm. lived out here in colorado briefly after college yeah i mean like immediately after college you guys moved out here um besides that brief time we spent in Dallas, but, um, Dallas, Texas. Yep. Tejas. But I was living in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the time. And I was mostly in Oklahoma because I, it was comfortable. I had fam my, my family was there. I had friends from Oklahoma state there. And you're from outside Oklahoma city. Yes. Yes. I am from outside Oklahoma city, originally from California though. Okay, yeah, and when did you move from California? When I was 14, I was a freshman in high Okay, school. right. So, so scary. So you spent more, oh wow, so you spent more time in California than you did Oklahoma. It was roughly the same amount of time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was, I was just about to turn 14, and then I moved here when I was 26, so, I mean, 13, 12 years. Crazy enough, the suburb you lived in outside of Oklahoma City, Edmund, yeah. our guest from episode four, Michael Alexander, the head of the UNC Music Department, lived in Edmund for a bit. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, I was mind blown. Yeah, that's Happened crazy. Happened on the mic. I was like, <gasps> well, uh, if he's part of the music department, did was did he maybe work at Oklahoma um, City University? I'm not, yeah. Uh, okay, because. Uh, I should remember, but they, I don't. They have a very good music program down yeah. there. Yeah. 
And I, I, I haven't listened to that episode either, so I didn't know if I could reference That's that. That's all right. I've listened to a few others. Yes, Jordan yeah. is an avid listener of The More You Know Co. Yes. Always appreciate it. Oh, it's awesome, man. So you're living in Tulsa. Yes, at the time. Um, you're getting an itch. Yeah, I'm getting an itch to kind of move on, move away, because at this time my sister had moved to Ohio and she was kind of doing her own thing. And um, not that, you know, I wanted to move away from what I was, I want to move away from what I was comfortable, but I didn't want to like leave my family. So it was, mm-hmm. it was tough. It was a tough decision, so I kind of wavered on that for a couple of years. But during that time, I had visited friends in other cities. Um, you, I visited out here. I visited, you know, our buddy Alex in Kansas City. Just kind of looking at other other places to go that were still kind of close to Oklahoma, but you know, a little bit farther away. I could do more things on my own. Um, grow as a man. Uh, I'd also, I'm a huge baseball guy, and I have always wanted to live near. A professional baseball team and go to games. I, I think that would be a really cool experience, and I haven't really had to do that. I've been to a few ballparks, but yeah, um, not... Tulsa Drillers don't count. <laughs> the Tulsa, I mean, they're they're a minor <laughs> league team, and no. yeah, you can get have a full baseball experience for like ten bucks. That includes getting a beer and a dog, and <laughs> you know, decent seats. But it, it's different being at a baseball stadium with a couple thousand fans versus. 40,000, mm. 50,000, you know, like getting all getting behind and the theatrics and everything like that. Everything that I had dreamed of wanting to be a part of when I was a kid. And unfortunately that ended after high school for me, but I wanted that. And so it was basically between moving to Kansas city and being a Royals fan. Not I'm a, I'm a Texas Rangers fan, but mm. moving to Kansas city, enjoying the Royals baseball experience or uh, moving to Colorado and join the Rockies. And you took me to a game one time too. Which was, thank you for that. Um, yeah. And and that was I, before you moved out here. That was before, yeah. yeah. Um, that was before. It was just one of my visits to come see you. And I f- fell in love. I fell in love with the state and I fell in love with watching the Rockies. I'm still a Texas Rangers fan by heart, but I do enjoy Colorado Rockies baseball a whole lot. Mm. So they're my other team I root for. But if it was Rockies Rangers, I'm still going to root for my boys. Yeah. yeah. So if you bump into Jordan or I on I-25 and you're uh, cursing at all the transplants, you have me to thank <laughs> Jordan being here. So. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, and then I I recruited my new roommate, Stephen, out here, too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, our buddy, Stephen. So you have me to thank for that as well. I had an right. extra people out here. <laughs> and it's a good point you make about we're both from Oklahoma Neither of us wanted to stay, but we didn't move to like Europe or we didn't right. move to the Middle East or Japan. We didn't move somewhere that's so far away. You know, we feel the strings of independence, but it's also easy to go back home. It's right. an 11 hour drive or an hour and a half plane flight. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's one thing I wanted to have was yeah. the ability to still go see my parents, to see my folks. Yeah. Do you get asked by people... So your family out here, I get this reaction a lot of time when people realize I moved out here like on my own without family connections or like a huge group of people, they're so surprised. And it makes me feel like even though it's very easy to move state to state, a huge majority of the population doesn't move mm. that far from home. No, not really. I mean, you, you know, I like, for example, our buddy Alex moved from Oklahoma to Missouri. Ryan, who I now work with, who <laughs> weirdly was my neighbor throughout all of high school, you know, he only moved from Oklahoma to Colorado. You know, so, I mean, Colorado's, it, everyone kind of tries to stay close, I think. Now, some people are different, and they want to just go do something completely the opposite. Right. Um, like you were telling me when we were hang, hanging out last night a little bit, too, um, about some of your, your former students from when you were teaching seventh grade, how they're from Texas, but some of them, Rhode Island, you know, uh, Massachusetts. They yeah. were trying to do something completely different where some of them just stayed, you know, I went to school in the city that they're in now. Right. Um, so I, I think everyone's just different. I met someone, and I don't know if this is true, according to what she says, but I had a conversation with someone in Greeley who claimed she had never been to Boulder in her life. Wow. That's she, crazy. She was probably mid-30s, and I was mind-blown. Yeah, I was like, only 40 minutes away, right? Yeah, and this was my first semester living in Greeley, and I was like, I lived here three months and I've been to Boulder <laughs> multiple times. Yeah. How? There's no way. So, so some of us get way out of our bubble. Some people don't. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's all just about what you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know, like you were saying, or like we were just talking about how Oklahoma was comfortable for me, but I was kind of itching to get out of my comfort zone. And that's why I moved to Colorado. And I did know a few people here, but not as many as I knew and had around me in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know, I only really had you and... Uh, Camille, and then a couple of the other Greeley boys, and 
than Seb. And th- those first moments when you move to a new place are intimidating. They are. So you're able to like get in a workflow. You start knowing people in work and outside of mm-hmm. work. Yeah, and getting starting to develop your own, your kind of not necessarily old habits, but kind of getting your routine, mm. kind of getting your habits. Yeah. What you're going to do every day. I want to touch on this story of your old high school neighbor and then how you reconnected with him with your oh, new sure. Red Robin position because of this... Ladies and gentlemen, is mind blowing. <laughs> so there's a guy I work with. We're not in the same department. Um, I'm in HR. He's in finance. But um, when I first moved to Oklahoma, he lived. It was basically myself, and then right next to me was our, our friend Cody, and then Ryan was on the other side of Cody. And we spent a lot of time just hooliganing around the neighborhood. Not really, but you know, just <laughs> being kids, being high school kids with nothing to do, and um, living near. You know, a bunch of people. He's a year older than me, so is Cody. But, you know, when I was a freshman, he was a sophomore. And Ryan and Cody were like my first friends in Oklahoma. Um, Ryan showed me around the school. Uh, He invited me to hang out with him and stuff. Uh, So it was very cool of him to do that because I was a very shy kid when I was 14. And moving across to a different state where I knew nobody Mm. is completely different from now where I moved recently and I know some some people out here. Right. Anyway, we were we were friends all through high school. Ryan ends up, you know, graduating year before me. He goes to uh, the University of Missouri, which his parents also went to school. His entire family went to school there, so it was normal for him to want to do that. Um, and he still goes to games and stuff all the time and alumni events. Like he's he very much loves the University of Missouri, which mm-hmm. is very cool. I wish I had that much love for Oklahoma State. <laughs> um, that way, I just it, go. Pokes. I don't. Yeah, go Pokes. Still, still a fan. Just you know. And I love my school, just not as much as Ryan loves Mizzou, but it's cool to see that. And then he ends up moving to Colorado shortly after he graduated. Uh, So he's been out here for about four or five years now. Um, I don't remember the exact timeline. Yeah, and then he worked for Dish. Now he works for Red Robin uh, doing finance. Um, And then when I moved out here, I actually remember seeing that he lived out here. And I was, when I first moved out here, I reached out to people that I knew lived out here because I wanted to get to reconnect with people that I hadn't seen in a while or, you know, just really hang out with friends and have them kind of show me a few different spots or like you took me on a couple trails, uh, which was awesome, especially the twin sisters, the most exciting and grueling experience of my life. <laughs> and that is in Northern Colorado. Yeah, that is twin Northern sisters Colorado. peak hiking yep. trail. I it highly is, recommend. It is my favorite trail. That but I've watch the weather, please. Yes. <laughs> uh, we, when we started, it was 89 degrees and sunny and we we're wearing shorts and t-shirt and when we we're on the top of the trail, it was 40 degrees and there were little snow flurries. And the wind was going <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I, I mean, we were standing kind of, you know, on the edge of some of the rocks, and I was like, "Oh, the wind's almost blowing me and my little tall, skinny body off of this mountain." <laughs> but uh, yeah, very cool, and uh, I appreciate you doing that. But so you lost contact with Ryan, yes, years ago, and he was already living in Colorado. Yes, yeah. We we didn't really talk throughout college. You know, maybe uh, we texted each other a couple times or Facebook messaged our, like our freshman and sophomore year, but nothing really besides just seeing how each other were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then when I went in for my interview uh, with Red Robin, the uh, recruiter I was going to talk to was named Jill. Ryan's first name is James. I just noticed his name two above Jill's and went, huh? I wonder if that's the exact same guy. And <laughs> I looked up on Facebook, and it was. I didn't mention his name throughout the entire uh, interview process, but at the very end, I met my now boss's boss, and I uh, dropped his name in the interview right before I left. I went, oh, yeah, it would be really cool. Um, My old old neighbor, neighbor, my old neighbor when I lived in high school, Ryan, he is here working at Red Robin, and it would be cool to reconnect with him. I didn't know he was here. (laughs) We kind of lost touch. It's so crazy. Yeah, and so then he, uh, she ended up calling him up to the office Asked about me. Ryan said, well, I haven't known him since high school, really. But you know, he was a good guy in high school, good kid. He'd be cool to be a part of the team. And then he messaged me right after that and was like, you have been living here in Colorado and you didn't tell me? But we've been able to reconnect, go to some concerts, go to some sporting events. It's been really cool. That is just, yeah, you cold turkey, you applied for this Red Robin job. And you just happened to see his name yeah. in the company. I mean... It was a small world, you yeah. know. And now you all work in the same building, right? Yes, he lives the floor right below me, so um, we go to lunch all the time. You know, we Skype message each other about silly emails for events that are going on around around Red Robin because they do a lot of cool community events. Uh, it's a really cool company to be a part of. 
That's to be so, honest, I'm very happy to be part of Red Robin. That's so crazy. I love small world stories. I think there's something to them mm-hmm. that connects with a certain part of our brain and makes us feel uh, a specific emotion that we don't feel a lot. That there's 7.45 billion people in the world, but yet we can run into people we know in places we, right. we wouldn't expect. I'll tell That's a brief crazy. story. Yeah. So my first job out of college was with Teach for America. I was going to be a seventh grade math teacher. And I went to a conference in downtown Dallas, Texas. And, you know, we're from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Or I'm from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Right. I'm, I'm in my first year being a seventh grade math teacher. And I pick a random session to go into. And I sit down. And I'm waiting for the conference session to start. And I hear a voice behind me. And this voice sounds oddly familiar. And I think, I know this person behind me. (laughs) And I think it's my math teacher. And not only that, I think it's my seventh grade math teacher. (laughs) And I turn around and I, shit you not, Miss Ball is sitting there. (laughs) My seventh grade math teacher. And I was a seventh grade math teacher. And I had not spoken to her since I took her class. Right. I mean, not many of us do keep in contact with teachers. And she looked up at me and her face was like instant recognition. And she said, wait, don't tell me. (laughs) <laughs> and then she remembered my name. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. And then over Christmas break, when I went home to Tulsa for the holidays, I got to go sit in her class for a day. And I observed her and talked that's with her and cool. hung out with her as she was still being a seventh grade math teacher. And it was the same room I took math in. That's awesome. And I was that's, a seventh grade math teacher. Did you get like some crazy deja vu? I was like, yes. And it was it was so surreal, man. I mean... That experience is something that I could I could write down in words for people and I'll never capture. Just that moment of seeing her in the role and then being able to go back to the classroom and see what she was doing for me as a student and then now I was a teacher. Wow. That is like That's a cool story too. It always Small pops world. in my head. Yeah. We're already rolling up on the time here. Yeah, I know. I We're talking. I feel like I excellent. rambled on my stories, no, so I apologize. It's for amazing. That. <laughs> I love it. We're filling we're, we are filling the listeners' ears with gold right now. <laughs> yeah. We should be surcharging for this episode. So Jordan and I have both prepared a list of six questions. Yes. We wanted to play a little on the mic activity here. And we said that the two of the questions need to be Colorado related. Yes. Three are random, and then one is supposed to be weird. Yes. Do you think we should ask them in order, or do you think it should be mixed I, up? I think we can... I mean, because I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I was thinking... I've prepared answers for some of my questions as well. Mm. You know, not necessarily... Um, some of, some of the, the questions I have are pertaining particularly just to you, but there are some that, you know, I, it's kind of a general question. Right. Um, that... I could have a little feedback answer. So I figure we'll just kind of go with the flow. Just whichever question sounds best to ask next. Okay. Because you know, we might have some that are very similar. And we could just pop, pop right off uh, the top, right back to each other. True. We'll just see where this goes, folks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So strap, we, strap <laughs> your damn seatbelt on and get ready. We are going for a ride. We are. Okay. First up, I'm going to ask you. Northern Colorado, sort of related, more Colorado level. Um, you are an avid sports fan. You know more about sports than me. What is the general status or predicted status for the main Colorado sports teams? We're talking Broncos, Nugs, Avs, and Rockies. I will say I'm not as big of a hockey fan, okay. so I don't know. We'll have to get uh, one of my friends, Tyler Chrisley, on the show. Yes, Tyler, he is, an avid Tyler is Avs fan. the guy I go to if I need any hockey uh, related advice or general knowledge. Um, I, I mean, when I go back to visit my family in the Bay Area, they usually take me to a San Jose Sharks game because a couple of them, especially my mom's sides, they're they're big hockey guys. Mm. And uh, some of my aunts, too, are really big into hockey. So they'll take me to a Sharks game. But that's about the most knowledge I have. But with baseball, I mean, the general the general feel for everyone, I think, with the Rockies, especially after how they did this season, just coming off the loss to the Brewers in the NLDS, I think that is always to, is to make the playoffs. Um, they do need to beef up their pitching rotation, but I think it's, hey, we're going to make the playoffs mm. this year with the Rockies um, with a chance to go to the World Series. I don't know if ev- everyone thinks they'll win it, but I think there's a, hey, we're going to make the playoffs. There's a chance we'll go to the World Series, and if we're hot, we could win the thing. Broncos... 
I don't know. I, I they the Broncos. Um, I am a 49ers fan, so I, I think like the 49ers are doing right now, I think the Broncos need to rebuild. I like Case Keenum as a person, as a quarterback. I don't think he was the correct decision hmm. to bring on in Denver. Not that I want to say he doesn't deserve a starting job somewhere. I just think what Denver was trying to do in the offseason was still go, hey, we're a playoff team. We still have a good defense. We still got some good pieces, uh, skill players on, on offense. Um, especially now with the rise of Philip Lindsay too, which was somebody they weren't expecting to have as kind of that speed back. He can add to the team as well. But Case Keenum, you know, he took that Vikings team to the playoffs last year to a NFC championship game and he did well, but his whole job was protecting the ball while the defense and the running backs took care of the game for him. Mm. Um, and throwing these little short passes to Adam Thielen who can catch everything Anything in the and world. then occasionally throwing it deep to Stephon Dix. Mm-hmm. And that was about it. And right now, they need, with the with the three-back situation Denver has, they don't really have that star running back yet to carry the load. So they're expecting Keenum to make some passes. And he can't do it right now. <laughs> and that's the problem, is they're giving Keenum more responsibility. Because when he was in Minnesota, he only threw like 20 to 25 times a game. Mm. And I went to the Broncos-Chiefs game, and he was making passes that he shouldn't have even try to make. Um, but I do like him as a personal quarterback, not trying to dog on him too no. much. But I think Case Keenum wasn't the right fit, and that's why the Broncos are not going to make the playoffs this year. And that's my personal opinion. Not going to do it. And then they're going to have to think about getting, one, a new quarterback because Keenum's only on a two-year deal and looking to possibly rebuild. Maybe yeah. even trading away some of the, the big names that they've had here for a while, like Demarius Thomas and um, you know Shane Ray on defense. Don't want to see that happen because they're really cool guys uh, on the Broncos team and as just a local guy that gets asked about the Broncos and how they did. And I occasionally like to watch the game. So I'm in the know and have that water cooler talk on Mondays, you know, <laughs> while you're eating a red Robin. Yeah. Sandwich. while I'm eating a red Robin burger that was just ready there for me. And someone emailed and said, Hey, by the way, there's like left 20 leftover burgers. If you want one. Yes. Yeah, sign well, me up. I'm not doing anything. Yep. So I might as well. <laughs> it's a good time for a break right now. Yeah. Let's go get a burger. <laughs> but that's how I, and the nuggets. I mean, I think everyone has high hopes for the nuggets this year especially just barely missing the playoffs last year. Yeah. Um, Michael Porter Jr. I think is going to be healthy, and he's supposed to be electric. So he didn't play much college ball, so we'll see how he does. But with Jokic, uh, Jokic, Jokic, yeah, Nikola Jokic, yeah, they signed him to a big deal and him kind of leading the team. I Hopefully they'll be able to squeak their way into the playoffs and then get hot in the playoffs and maybe upset a few teams. I think that's the current outlook of Denver sports. Okay. At least from – a local Colorado man's perspective, kind of. <laughs> hey, perfect perspective. All right, you're up with a question. I'll go ahead and ask you a no-co related question since you asked me a Colorado question. Okay. So you have basically lived in the northern Colorado area for the past four years. Um, but what are some of your favorite breweries or uh, pubs up in northern Colorado that you like to frequent um, if, you're, if there's not a new pub or brewery that you're trying to check out mm -hmm. and what are some of your favorite trails to go back and visit that you've maybe done once or twice before okay this is a good question so shout out to avery um they're big <laughs> listeners of the show no not really uh, <laughs> they could be yeah maybe that may be one fish i try to fry someday but avery brewing in boulder the first time i went there i didn't know that they were nationally distributed so it's not like i was drawn to them because of their beer already i just walked in and the experimental brews that they have there the space they have there um on the east side of boulder is absolutely fantastic in addition to avery i really love verboten in loveland which is someone i eventually want to reach out to for the podcast i feel like new belgium is kind of old hat i mean it's everyone loves new belgium right. especially up in northern uh colorado and then another brewery i want to mention by name is weldworks they have exploded you I remember. Take me to well works. Yeah, yeah. It's on right off uh, downtown Greeley, right there on Eighth Avenue. And I always tell people, I remember when Well Works opened. I went. They had four beers. The interior space was lame, and I thought, this place is gonna die. This place is not gonna make it. And in a year or two, they exploded. And now really? this year, they want to release a hundred beers in 2018 wow. alone. Wow. And every time we are sitting at Weldworks, usually outside on the patio, we see people walk in and they'll walk out with cases of beer. Wow. And Weldworks doesn't distribute that gotcha. far. 
So people have to come in or even fly just to come buy Weld Works beer. They'll wow. come from out of state. And that is insane. That's that that shows that you are a fan right. of Weld Works beer. Yeah. And yeah, I like to talk about Weld Works because I feel like that's more it's it's more close to the micro stage. Avery and New Belgium they're going to do fine. They're, they're, they're big ships. They're companies now. Huge beer yes. cans. Do, 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 yeah. chunk, <laughs> chunking stuff out. Like, no one's worried about their success. No, they're going to be just fine. They yeah. are. Business is booming. And the first brewery I ever went to in northern Colorado was the day after I moved, and it was Wiley Roots. I've always had a, a strong, like, nostalgic heart connection to Wiley Roots. And they will be on the show after they're done with their renovations. All right. They doubled their space. So they're working Ooh, on that right okay. now. Yeah. Looking forward to that episode. Favorite hiking trails? I would say, we already mentioned it, Twin Sisters. I've hiked it three times. I loved it all three times. It is just a, it's a wonderful hike. You end up with amazing views. There's multiple spots you could end up at, and I feel like it's a good medium difficulty uh, for hikers of all levels. Mm-hmm. And I was telling you last night, a hike that I really enjoyed in the area up by Estes is actually a hike called Estes Cone. And oh, I yeah, highly recommend did. this. It's an amazing hike. You, you end up, It's challenging at the end in a good way. You end up at the top and you end up with a 360 view, both of Estes Park and Long's Peak. And then you can see the Twin Sisters on your other side. And it's just an amazing. And, and you know, that's out, outside Estes up there in northern Colorado. So. Yeah. And you showed me some pictures of you and Holly, and it looked beautiful. Yeah. It was an amazing trail. Just absolutely stunning pictures and just stunning views in general. Yeah. It's awesome. And I will give a shout out to Lions, Colorado, which I feel like on average has amazing hikes. I love to go outside the Lions area. And if people don't know where that is, it's about 15 minutes northwest of Boulder. And they have like 10 to 15 hikes right outside the town. I love going there. I have never heard of Lions, but now I know. Yeah. Perfect. The more you know, Co. Yeah, the more you know, Co. Um, This is an educational show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, we're, we are defying expectations. Saying this is going to be the less you know, though. <laughs> Boom, dropping facts, spitting knowledge. That was more just a one-liner. I, <laughs> I pre-planned and I really wanted to say it. Just like you gave me the tagline for um, the pickle joke oh, yeah. that I made. <laughs> that it's the real dill. The real dill. Yeah. <laughs> what is something that you are surprised about since moving here? I guess the biggest surprise for me is ever since I, especially since I started working for Red Robin is how many corporations, their home offices, are here uh, in Denver. Um, I learned that Chipotle's was here. They are moving now to California. Mm. But you, most corporations, you think their headquarters are either in California or in New York. Yeah, or San Francisco. Yeah, or, or... St- uh, the, yeah the Bay Area or in L.A. or in New York. Um, it was just surprising um, that Red Robin's corporate office was here, um, as well as some of the other bigger corporations in the area. So I think that was the biggest thing that surprised me. But then again, you think of how big Denver has grown, mm. um, especially with all the recent transplants like you and I right. moving here for mostly bigger opportunities than what Oklahoma can provide in some of these smaller states surrounding Colorado and, and a hub like Denver is. You know, It would make sense for a larger corporation to want to put their home headquarters here. Or like I know Amazon recently came in here as, and they have a like uh, distribution center here. Mm. So a lot of bigger companies are com- looking to Denver as prime real estate. Yeah, I've often uh, pondered how Denver feels both like a huge city, but then at the same time it doesn't feel like it's that big. And I don't know if just the way it sprawls, or if it's that you can see the mountains to the west at all times. Yeah, but- I think it's a little bit of. The fact that you're so close to nature, even though you live in a big city, makes it feel like you're not living in that big of a city. Mm. If you were to put Denver in Oklahoma, it'd feel like a big-ass city. Yeah, it'd feel huge. (laughs) And there's nothing else to look at in Oklahoma because there's just a couple hills and some trees. Right. You know, there's no mountains. There's no huge, giant rock formation sticking out of the ground like what Colorado has to look at. Yeah, the Turkey Mountain outside Tulsa. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to go there to visit to know. It's a hill. It is a hill. It's just a hill. It is just a hill. All right, you're up. That's right. Okay, so it's actually my next... I want to do a Colorado question as well, just to keep the Colorado theme going. Okay. So this was more directly related to your podcast, and also because I'm just curious to know. So with getting guests for your podcast, are you reaching out to them? Do some of them contact you? If somebody wants to be on the show, 
um, because they are a listener because, you know, like you said, Avery Brewery's a listener. Who else knows could be listening to this? Right. Some famous celebs even. I'm sure Hickenlooper, the governor. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I don't know what he is. Actually. <laughs> but how would they get in contact with you if they were interested as being a featured guest on the show? So I will say that for the Morinoko, it's a bucket list item for someone to reach out and say, can I be on the show? How I've contacted people, so every guest on the show and every guest that's currently scheduled on the show, I reached out via one of two avenues. The majority of that, 90, 95% of that is email. I'll straight up cold email people. So I do Google searches like small business entrepreneurs in Loveland, or I'll say Fort Collins people to know about, Mm -hmm. or I found Post Paradise by typing in NoCo bands you should know, and I found a list of bands and reached out to them. And it's all cold email. So a lot of times I don't get a lot of responses back. And so it's been really neat because I would say that total time I've spent searching and emailing people after 23 recorded episodes now would be about four hours, five hours. It's not a lot of time. And so I've actually been really pleased with people's responses. And sometimes it'll take them over a week to respond. Mm. And then just recently, about two or three weeks ago... I landed my first guests from Instagram. So the Instagram okay. page has started to blow up. It's easily the most popular social media avenue really? of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for the show. And I just kind of thought, wow, I have all these people I'd like to be on the show who started following me. So I started private messaging them. and Sliding in their DMs. Yep. <laughs> sliding in the DMs. And I ask them, hey, do you want our full-fledged email that I send to people? And if they give me an email address, I shoot them it, and we set it up. And, of course, it's been the same uh, situation on Instagram. Some people never reply. I will say, the the interesting in-between part is that some people will say they're interested, and then it it just never comes to fruition. They either drop off the radar, we lose contact, or I specifically remember I tried to get a food truck in northern Colorado, and we went back and forth probably 10 to 15 times trying to find a a piece in our schedule. And I felt bad. They just gave up. Really? Yeah. (laughs) They just thought, ah, no, like, it's this is not worth the trouble. This is not, yeah, not worth so, the hassle. Yeah, that but, food truck was not on the show. Yeah, I'm, and that kind of stinks that some of them seem like they're excited about it, and it gets you excited about it, and then you know they just end up dropping off the face of the earth, basically, and not replying back to you at all, yeah. and kind of ghosting you. But that's okay. I understand. I get it, too. I mean, I'm sure they're, some of these are businesses. They're busy. Some of these are people, and people have busy schedules. But it's still, especially if it was someone that... Kind of reached out to you, not necessarily first, but start following you. You slid in their DMs. They replied back. You look into them a little more. Oh wow, look who look who this could be as a guest on the show, and then just nothing. Yeah, you know, like sometimes I don't know that would get me excited, right? And then just ah, dang. Yeah, I do get my hopes up, but it also gets balanced out by the amount of people that I'm getting to interview. I'm stacking out two, three, sometimes even four weeks ahead right now. So, oh, okay, not gotcha. yeah. It'd be a different thing as if uh, my, the rest of my email inbox was, whew, yeah, <laughs> you had one, one lined up, and then just I had nothing. like one six weeks from now, yeah. and then everyone's saying no. That'd be a different story. Yeah, that'd be different. But it seems like yeah, you have a lot of guests. Yeah, scheduled. So that's nice. All right, we're gonna leave the Colorado section of this podcast behind, and now we're gonna get into our three random questions. Ooh. So, Mr. Xander Delicious, if life were a video game, what would some of the cheat codes be? For me? In general. Or just in general? What would some of the pre-available cheat codes be? Uh, Like, you start with Instacash. You know, like, uh, some of those bonuses give you, like, well, here's, like, 10,000 in-game tokens you can use. Like, I know my, you know, I like to play MLB The Show. And they will do that if you pre-order. You get like 10,000 stubs that you can spend on packs for cards so that you can use them in uh, Diamond Dynasty to play against other people online. I'd have that cheat code in life. Give you like, oh, you're born? Boom, Insta 2,000, two grand. Like, get you started. Put that in a college fund, baby. You know, like that would be cool. Okay. Um, Also, probably Big Head Mode because Big Head Mode's hilarious. (laughs) If you ever played like the old sports games. Where you can throw the cheat, especially like NFL Blitz, and you have these little bodies, but these giant domes running around. <laughs> that would be kind of funny to see. So those are the two I could think of that I'd want to have. All right. Sweet. As cheat codes. What about you? 
What cheat codes would you want? You so probably I, had to think about this a little bit. I think if you could just type in and boom, you get $1,000. Like, that's so useful in life. Or a pause time cheat. Or you can, like, add time. Ooh, so you a get pause to the end of the day. Cheat. I don't feel like going to bed. Or I stay up till four and I have to work at six in the morning. I need time. Pause time cheat code. Get 10 hours sleep. Ah, wake up. That would be nice. And resume time. Yeah. Or I would just want to not have to sleep. Mm, like no sleep required i i love sleeping don't get me wrong but if i didn't feel like sleeping ever then what well, i wouldn't love sleeping as much as i do and just re-energizing myself yeah so if i if i could just stay up and get more work done for another eight hours yes that'd be awesome or get to learn a new hobby or learn a new skill learn a new trick right or just Bum out on the couch, veg out, play some video games. Well, adding on to learning a new skill or trick, if you imagine it like a, a role-playing game, an RPG, where you can affect like your charisma oh, yeah. or your sneak, if you just typed in cheat codes and all of a sudden I was a 10 out of 10 charismatic, hey, I'm getting this job interview. I right? am nailing it. Self-confidence through the roof. So I wanted to ask you kind of a similar question, but not involving cheat codes or video games. I have personally been... I recently watched through Avatar with my roommate Steven and my girlfriend Emily. Um, we watched through Avatar, and now we're watching Legend of Korra. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, if you could control one element, water, air, fire, earth, what element would you like to control? Water, air, fire, or earth. Mm -hmm. If you could control air, you could fly. Yes. Right? But what if you control water, you could just surf on water. But you got to have water present. Yes, mm -hmm. you do. I definitely need to live in a, a coastal area yeah. if I was going to choose water. True. Uh, if you could fire, you could heat anything. Mm. Earth, you could transform the earth to do whatever you wanted it to. Right. You could bend things. So my, nat my first inclination is fire is sweet. I love, I, I don't know, I'm a little bit of a pyro. I just love fire. I love campfires. I love the aura of them. I love the smell. <laughs> People are always like... Oh, I gotta wash my clothes. It smells like campfire. I'm like, no, I'm not washing this for two weeks. Like, I'm putting it on. I'm sleeping in this bad boy. Yeah, I love them. I get into my sheets. I love them. My fall jacket smell like campfire. Um, so fire is like my first um, sort of like spot check response. But air would allow me to fly, and I feel like there's so many times just the wind. There's something serene and mystical about air and wind. So, oh man, if I gotta pick. I I'm a, I'm a boring 28-year-old adult, so I'm going to say air because I feel like it's more functional. If I could fly and manipulate the wind around me. I agree. I choose air as well. Yeah. Um, for that exact reason, you could fly. You could also shift the air around you. So you could, like, imagine being able to, like, dance mm. with that air. Or levitate. Yeah, or levitate in the air. Just push yourself anywhere. Or if you were about to get hit by a car, you just whoosh. Yeah, you just and whoosh yourself out of the way. Just do a little whoosh. Just yeah. push the air and you side dodge. Right. I think it'd be very useful in everyday life. Yeah, Whereas, the fire is more like cool for destruction, but right. I don't want to be a nine-year-old me would choose fire, though. Right. I mean, I would definitely be choosing fire. I thought about earth as well because it would be so easy if you could just ramp up somewhere. Just mm -hmm. make the earth go. Or you could also like push the earth out of the way and you could run faster. But anyway, I thought, I thought long and hard about that question, actually. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I enjoy it. Next one up. What sport would it be good to add a required minimal amount of alcohol to before the game began? So everyone is a certain level of intoxicated, and then we play ball. Oh, man. Baseball would be funny. There'd be a lot more hit batters the and strikeouts. The score would be 0-0 zero, zero yes. every game. <laughs> but there'd be a lot more players getting well, a lot more players getting hurt, but there'd be more action in that in that regard. Uh, Maybe they'd pitch slower, so it'd also be a little maybe, easier to hit. But maybe. I just feel like every pitch would be a strike because they would swing like I two seconds later. I am going to say hockey mm. would be the funniest one. Um, also, more practical, you get hit a lot in hockey. You won't feel it as much. And swinging the stick, there'd be a lot more people missing. <laughs> and maybe some sticks flying out of people's hands. The fights would be more brutal. The fights, yeah. I, thought of, I also thought about soccer. Just players running and then like Oof. falling over themselves. Um, I cannot imagine getting a certain amount of drunk and then running around for an It hour. sounds miserable. Yeah. So I'm going to go with hockey. Okay. I think hockey would be a great one to add it to. Very good. Yeah. What do you think? <sighs> would you pick hockey probably as well? I'm trying to think of um, off the beat sports. I was thinking like also lacrosse. 
<laughs> and they kind of find like nobody would catch that ball. It's, it's be swinging their stick around, or trying to keep it steady. Yeah, uh, lacrosse would be kind of funny. Tennis, tennis would be the serves <laughs> would just be. There'd be so many lets. There would be a lot of lets. That yeah, that would be the least entertaining game of tennis. Yeah, I've I don't know seen. if this is controversial to say, but car racing. I was thinking about that, but that might be a little controversial to say. <laughs> Yeah, don't give drunk drivers an Indy 500. Uh, no, not when you're going formula 200 miles yeah. an hour. Don't want to be given a certain kind of formula to those Formula <laughs> 1 drivers. That's right. I'm going to ask you my next question, which is related to most because I've been playing a lot of Super Mario Party lately since okay. it just came out. Yeah, it just came out. So it's big. Which Mario character within the Mario universe would you like to be for a day? Just a day. To think about all the the Mario games you've played uh, with, you know, from Super Smash... Uh, not, not, the Mario characters within Super Smash Brothers, not that Super Smash Brothers is a Mario game, but within Super Smash Brothers, any like the uh, Paper Mario, Mario and Luigi games, any of those kind of games you've played, which character would you like to be for a day mm. and have their skills, their powers? So it's not my answer, but I will claim a favorite, and that is... <laughs> I am a Toad fan through and through. I've always loved Hello! Toad. <laughs> I always play Toad in any Mario Kart racing game. I always think it's hilarious. Why is he wearing uh, underwear and an open vest? <laughs> Dude might as well be naked. And I don't even know where Toad comes from. What's the backstory? I don't know. Love Toad. Yeah, Toad's awesome. But when I'm thinking about all the people... Oh, DK is kind of sweet. You're this huge ape, and you got a tie on, so you're still keeping a little classy. Yep. He can jump and swing around like crazy. But I am uh, I feel like I'm... Maybe this is a cliche answer, but I gotta say Bowser. Dude, I was also thinking Bowser. Give me, give me why you'd want to be Bowser. So you're this huge, maniacal... Uh, I don't even know if you'd call him a turtle. It's like the world's yeah, it's like a weird, scariest turtle. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's a snapping turtle is what he's supposed to be. Yeah. Or like a mutated snapping turtle. But it's just huge. He looks sweet. He's domineering. He's got a castle. Do I need to say <laughs> more? Yeah, I feel like that would be a sweet yeah, experience. I think so, too. I What what hit me most with Bowser was I want to know what it's like to be feared for a day. <laughs> Everyone is scared of Bowser. Yeah. And to be able just even just talking to Bowser, his his minions are scared of him. Everyone's scared of Bowser. I've never had anyone be scared of me, you know? <laughs> so I think it'd be very interesting to be feared for just a day. I wouldn't want to do it my whole life, but it'd be cool to do it a day. Get high enough in the Red Robin chain, you might have some people scared of Maybe, you. maybe. You could be a real-life Bowser. I don't know. I smile too much. I, I'm too polite, and I smile too much. Yeah. Like, I work... I, I I think it's funny because I work so Red Red Robin is very cool in the fact that there's a lot of female leaders, um, which I think is an awesome thing, and uh, and they they're they're great they're great leaders to work for and work with, but because I'm in an office full of ladies so much, I definitely keep my politeness and my formality up mm-hmm. because I don't want to offend anybody. Not that I think I would, because a lot of them are very cool to just interact with. Mm-hmm. But they're always like, oh, you're so polite. Because, you know, I'll be like, oh, miss, sorry. Let me get the door for you. Ladies, how are you doing today? You know, I try to keep it very formal. So I think that's why no one would ever be scared of me. Because I'm always that way. Right. In public, sir, miss, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a Bowser, it would give you a chance to open this door. Yeah, just to have that, like, that shock of fear. <sighs> yeah, just the... I could even be a nice Bowser and be like, let me get that door for you. And they'd be like, oh, oh. I think they'd probably pass out I by sneak thinking... In. Is this eight foot snapping turtle <laughs> talking to me right now? And I'm terrified for my life. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Yeah. Why is he out on the streets like this? <laughs> the streets. Okay. Right. What is something that is invisible that you wish people could see? Something invisible that people could see? Yeah. What, like. Fart gas? <laughs> what are you talking about here? Literally, that's the question. Uh, carbon what is something you carbon wish? monoxide. You'd want to see that. I'd want to know because well, the whole part is that it's odorless and you can't see it, right? Right. Now you can see carbon monoxide. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Hey, that's a functional answer. But I don't know what else is invisible. That a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's up to interpretation. I mean, fart gas. Thoughts. 
Fart gas is kind of a funny answer because <laughs> you would no longer be able to sneak out a fart. I know, but like imagine if I you just let one farts. go and it was like a bright blue cloud enters the room. I mean, it You'd would change. It would change social spaces. Well, yeah, and also I feel like some people would panic. Ah, yeah. gas! Get out! Get out! Oh my god! Someone let out a fart! Get out of here! This, just that would be on the window. Oh, we're gonna die! <laughs> <laughs> that would not be good. Because uh, you'd have to hold them in extra, right? Because right now in society, if you gotta let a fart go and you're gonna do it, you just do it in a, in a manner where right. no one's gonna tell. But if a cloud pops out and everyone can see it, it's like super bright and visible, then there's no more getting away no. with it. You hold that until you get home or yeah. you're in the car. Or you're, or you're in the bathroom. Yeah. Although, I don't know. So, do you do you feel safe farting in the men's bathroom, like a public men's bathroom? No. I don't either. Yeah. Because I feel like it's still a judge-free zone. Or it's not a judge-free zone. Right. People are still going to judge you in there. There are two types of men in a men's restroom. Those who feel comfortable farting and those who don't yeah. in there and... Sometimes it can sound like an orchestra. <laughs> True that. It can't sound like an orchestra in there. Um, so what would what would you go with? For... My first Sorry, thought was it. people's level of kindness. So you oh, don't have you could just see it, right? I It'd be like an aura saying. around them, and you could tell like from a, a degree of Gandhi to asshole. Whether you, you know you don't have to put hours or days into learning to get to know someone, you already knew how kind of a person they were. Based on and their that's aura. just like emanating out of them. I and, like that. And if I became a more kind person, then I'd emit a different aura. Let's say it was like a, a just a like a general space around them. Yeah, that would be cool. I like I like that. My answer feels kind of lame now compared to your no, answer. No, no need. That's so, that'd be cool if I could just look at someone and be like. Oh, they're they're a chill person. Job interviews would be slightly different. You yes, know? they would be. And so with dating, dating would be. Oh like man, that. like What's first dates word? would be a totally new experience. And imagine meeting new people. Like any time, a family member or a friend br- brung like a new significant other, or they Ooh, brought yeah. new friends. Like you, you like, let's say you get invited to a hangout. And then you show up and you can tell everyone. But, okay, so I just thought about this. We would know that our aura, our aura was visible. True. And then... People would probably be just more kind in general. Everybody would be more because kind. They wouldn't because want, yeah. they wouldn't want to be a bad aura and then nobody would want to hang out with them. Of course. You'd have those people who didn't give a shit. And they just still would be a-holes. Just, and some yeah. people would be proud of that. They'd say, oh, look at no, me. Like I'm a bad person. But I think in general yeah. people would be more not, kind. just not kind. They're not necessarily bad. They're just not kind. Yeah. Yeah. So they, I guess they just don't go out of their way to assist other people. Mm. They just kind of do their own thing. But just because you do your own thing doesn't mean you're not kind. Right. I, I, I don't, yeah, I guess... It's well, because like, it would be acts of kindness that would boost your Not necessarily. Aura, right? I mean, I think even your internal thoughts. I think this would judge just how... Well, well I don't know. I can't even think internal of... Internal thoughts would suck because I would consider myself <laughs> a kind person... But I think of some dark stuff sometimes. Right. I don't want, want that messing with my aura. Yeah. So and I wonder if we could see our own. Yeah, because some people mm. are kind, but they have different thoughts sometimes than just kind thoughts. Yeah, this is a this is a this is a, yeah. a deep trench. Yep. Yeah. Deep thoughts with yeah. bo- with Boosty and Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next up. Um. So it's my turn. It is. Um. So my question. It's because I thought of this, and I'm kind of curious. You're on a road trip. Okay. You're out of snacks in the car. Mm. There's a gas station coming up. I'm scared. It's one of those bigger gas stations, right? The nice ones. The nicer ones. That, that you definitely know have a lot of good good snacky goodness in there. Have you, you know? been to the Oasis? I've not been to the Oasis. It is a massive three-story gas Ooh. station and store. Where is it? Off I-70, in between here and Tulsa. Oh, my. Yeah. Ooh, I'll have to, okay. The place is a a wonder of Kansas. I'll have to stop there on my way, my way, my way home. Next they have, time. they have any kind of snackage you might you might oh, want. Oh yes. But anyway, back to your question. You have to stop. You're gonna stop in there. You're grabbing two items and a drink. What are you grabbing? Like two snacky things and a drink. Okay. So I'm going to admit here that uh, for the better part of a year now, I've been trying to be low carb. Um, I would not call myself ketogenic. I'm not going to hop on the <laughs> keto train. Don't put me in that box. I swear. <laughs> Do not put me in that box. It's more low carb. So um, 
It's just more of an intent to reduce the amount of carbs I have in my diet, and among other things. So here's what I'd probably say. My drink is going to be a monster energy of sorts. I have brand a weird, strange, uh, nostalgic oh, brand loyalty to Monster. I love Monster. I always tell the people when there was only one flavor, and I found it in the back of a Piggly Wiggly in Owasa, Oklahoma. <laughs> I drank it. I said I love it. I was like 14 or 15, and I have supported Monster ever since. And I love the diversity. Um, Those OG Monsters were the best in yeah. high school. Um, my tongue cannot handle them now, but mm. they were the best in high school. Now I now if I'm going to drink a Monster, it's the zero sugar, zero calories. That's the ones I would get. Yeah. So I'd probably say the Ultra Sunrise. I'm a sucker for orange flavor oh, the things. the orange one? So it's the sugar-free whatever monster it has all, all the cool tribal designs on the mm. can i sound like such a bro i know <laughs> planning out about monster Yo, you here. seen these tribal designs man <laughs> um yeah i i like the orange one the one i get is usually the grape flavored one the oh that one, one's good or the black cherry yeah yeah those are my those are my two faves yeah and in terms of food hit me with it here is a search that i do in gas stations <laughs> i try to find a way to find meat Without carbs. And it has led me to a very weird spot in, gr- in gas stations. In some, but not all, there is a section of grocery stores, or sorry, gas stations that are like a super micro grocery store. And they'll have just packs of turkey meat. That's what I buy. <laughs> what? I just straight up buy like two packages of turkey breast or, or like sliced turkey meat. And not I'll eat like- that. Cheez Its? No. Or I don't know, some Skittles? No. Like normal people? No. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just it's I know. so funny. People make fun of me anytime they see it. It is so embarrassing, but I do it anyway. What if it's like a seven eleven they or like a or, or like back home at Quick Trip and there's hot dogs or yes. some sandwiches. So I also well, see sandwiches have a ton of bread. Oh but true. Sometimes I will um compromise with myself and get like the rollers off the grill or whatever. They have like taquitos or like like breaded chicken sticks. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> bring them on. In addition to that, I would probably either get a fruit item or a cheese stick. Okay. And 16-year-old me right now is listening to this and thinking, that's who I'm going to be one day? Uh, yeah, what, what a lame-o. Oh, my God. But my 16-year-old self, we think of the same thing. Yeah. I was going what in What are your there, go-tos at I'll, the gas station? Well, 16-year-old me would be grabbing a big thing of Mountain Dew and probably some sort of candy item and some cookies. Like that was for sure what I was grabbing. Um, nowadays, if I'm on a road trip and I'm stopping to get something in the gas station, depending on if I'm quaving, cra- quaving, <laughs> if I'm craving some Quavo, su- <laughs> Quavo, honcho. Um, if I'm grabbing some sweets, I'm probably going to grab like a candy bar because it's easier to eat. Either that or I'll grab either some grandma's cookies because they're easy to break off and just pop in my mouth mm. or pop tarts because they're easy to break off and pop in my mouth or just getting some cheez-its mm. cheez-its are, are a good go-to for me and i'm probably grabbing a monster energy as well yeah i like it be i like having cans in the car rather than a bottle yeah it's yeah. easier yeah it's easier you don't have to worry about the cap right if i'm gonna chug it down like a bro if i'm gonna splurge a high carb snack I have enjoyed since I was a young child is Gardettos. Ooh, Gardettos are good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Do you like the classic or the Italian recipe, the cheesy blend? Classic, for sure. Classic's the way to go, too. Yep. I, I like also classic. love Bold Party Chex Mix. And don't even get me started about Flamin' Hot Cheetos. I miss Flamin' Hot Cheetos on a <laughs> weekly basis. I can't handle the heat. It's too powerful for <laughs> then me. Then you stay out of the kitchen. I do. Yeah. I stay out of the Flamin' Hot Cheetos kitchen, that's for sure. All right, we are on our last pair of questions. So pair, yeah. So well, like, so I ask one, you ask one. Oh yes, this is the weird one. I was like, well, I do have extra ones just in case. It was okay. in case you were your questions were upstaging my questions. I had to bring, or if I was an idiot and you had to save the podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't worried about that. <laughs> yeah, you're too kind. Too kind. <laughs> if Jordan Zanardelli could start a cult, and you had one month to plan. So you get to start your own cult. What would it be? What would it look like? Well, the cult, we would just sit around and watch baseball all the time. Mm. That would be the cult. Just hang out. So let's get, into, the, let's get into some nitty gritty details. Where are you at? What type of place is it? How does this all get funded? Oh, bless. I don't know. Well, let's make it up on the fly. <laughs> I really don't know that much about cults. Uh, it would be, we believe solely in just baseball. 
Um, so <laughs> I would... Now, would you get to live your normal life and then you come back as the leader or would you always be there watching baseball? No, I would always be there watching baseball. It would be, even though it was a cult, it would be a haven that you could leave freely if you wish to get mm. back to your normal life. But Ooh, it would just be... That's frowned upon in cults, man. Well, you I'm a keep different kind of cult leader. Well, fine. You, you have to dedicate your life to baseball. You come in, you lock the doors, and we just watch and study pitchers tendencies and batters tendencies because i'm weird and that's what i like to do okay and we got to have money right because i'm assuming this is like on a huge property a huge house with like amazing tv you're probably right yep so how are we making money here i'm stealing money from my 401k (laughs) (laughs) this is my retirement you're single for i'm you're impressive if your 401k (laughs) is gonna it's not float an entire (laughs) it's definitely not what if you recruited X baseball players. Ooh, that would be good. I'll recruit X baseball players and, and their millions also, funded. I will, I will recruit um there are quite a few gentlemen that have like really expensive baseball memorabilia collections. So I will recruit them, have them sell like one of Babe Bruce's bats, and that will be able to fund the entire operation. So you have this entire like museum of baseball artifacts that all your members have brought. Yes. And they know that to to continue the cult mission. We're going to slowly sell these to yes, keep the lights on. A, yep. That's going to kind of be our, our livestock that we'll sell off. But until it gets sold, it's in like this huge museum it's that like people museum. can go enjoy. Yep. yep. You, you basically, you enter in, we lock the door behind you. You have to just lo- look at memorabilia and watch baseball and study baseball players. We'll give you a player. You have to watch every at bat. But people love it. Yes, but they they, but they generally this. it's it'd be like a place for scouts and people that just like to watch baseball all the time, like I do, mm-hmm. because I would love to be able to study a player and be like, oh, okay, well, it looks like he struggles with a, a, a high and outside fastball or a low and away slider, which everyone does. I think that would be really cool just to have all these statistics on all on all these different baseball players. I really don't like to analyze data at all, mm-hmm. but with baseball, yeah, I love it. So, yeah. very weird. There it is. Zanardelli's cult. The baseball cult. That's all I got. That's going to be its name. Just baseball cult. What's a, what's Not like creative a, with the name. What's like a name. quippy baseball term? Like, what's it called when you swing at a ball and you miss it? Uh, a strike. Okay. I feel like that was the most obvious one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are there other forms of a strike? Like um, like a near miss or like where they knock it, but it... We'll call it the foul tip. The foul tip. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> the foul tip. Actually, that really sounds really good. Actually, that sounds like a really good chicken joint. The foul tip? The foul tip. Oh, uh, you yeah. call it F-O-W-L, Ooh. and you put it next to a stadium. And mm-hmm. it's like a good like chicken and barbecue kind of joint. And you dip it in different... And you're known for your sauces. Yeah, you got so different So you just put sauces. the tip of the chicken in yeah. and dip. Maybe it's like a wing place. Mm. We're going oh, to get cracking man. on this new entrepreneurial pursuit yes. right after this. So, uh, yeah, my name is Jordan Zarardelli. I'm here with Foul Tip. Uh, it's my new business I'm opening up. Thank you for having me on The More You Know Co. Yeah, if we have any initial <laughs> investors out there who would like to get some capital, please reach yes. out. Free free ad right here. That's right. Boom. Um, all right, so my question uh, for you, it kind of dives into your past a little bit more. Um, it's nothing scary, I promise. So... <laughs> for so i like to make videos now and i basically what i do is i just make them for my fantasy football league so not any way to promote that but it's fun for me to do and it's a way to keep the league involved and it's a way for me to exert this creative energy i have and put it into something i like to do which is make videos but you were the one that actually got me really into making videos um at least doing it myself ryan the guy i used to live that was my neighbor in high school that and i work with he uh, would sometimes make videos with a couple of his high school friends. And I had like brief parts in some of them. So that kind of bit the bug a little bit for me. But then I met you in college and you did some am- amateur filmmaking and some creating videos. And I I was lucky enough to have met you and Nick at the time, who was your partner for some of the, uh, some of the videos you made. You kind of got me into it. We started the OSU Filmmakers Club. Mm-hmm. You did a lot of the legwork. I was kind of just an officer and helped you promote it a little bit. Boosted our resume. Yeah, bo- yeah, boosted the resume a little bit too. But it was it kind of reignited, it kind of ignited this creative energy in me, and maybe want to start making videos on my own. Even after you know you had graduated college and moved down to to Texas at the time, and I was still at OSU for another year, but and I wanted to continue it even into my adulthood. Mm-hmm. And so I'm curious because I've kind of 
continued with it. And while you started at a younger age and then kind of stopped after college for the most part, um, what got you originally started in filmmaking or creating videos back in the day? And then I know you probably stopped because of time, but do you plan on ever going back into it and starting again? All right. Do you know Christopher Holden? Yes. So a mutual acquaintance of ours from Oklahoma State, who now lives in Fort Worth, Texas as an architect. Oh, I didn't know that. So I had had eighth grade science class with him. And he had made a video for a history class with marionettes. He used marionettes and he used a voiceover to make a special project for history. And I had happened to see it. I wasn't in his history class, but somehow I got a hold of the video and I saw it. And while I was watching it, I thought, I want to be a part of this. So I didn't know Chris. I randomly approached him in eighth grade science class. And if if we can all just take a quick camera flashback to middle school, that's a pretty bold thing to do. Yep. That's an awkward (laughs) thing. That is a very bold thing to do. And Chris was kind of a, he played tuba and band. He was very popular. Everybody knew Chris Holden. And so. It was nerve-wracking to approach him, but I did. And I said, hey, love the video. I'd love to make videos with you. A couple weekends later, I went to his house, and we just made a video for fun. And it was actually a video project that I got to do now for school. And it was super fun, and I ended up buying some of my own marionettes. And we started a show called the Ivan Coltrane Chronicles. I still have the DVD. (laughs) And this was 8th and ninth grade. And all of our films were 10 minutes long and they were filled with random skits of marionettes so we'd think of anything we could do and between the two of us we had probably 20 30 different marionettes they were animals weird creatures people we had this clown that we'd always make do a funny dance (laughs) and we'd make fake parody commercials just anything that popped off the uh, mind of that we could use with marionettes. And that slid into high school. Chris and I kind of stopped hanging out more when we got into high school. We started being on the camera instead of marionettes. And mm-hmm. so it's like when we got our first taste of recruiting friends to help out and stuff. And then I kind of got this internal feeling once Chris and I started stopped hanging out so much that, wait, I could do this on my own. And that's when we started getting people like Cody, Nick, Alex, Isaac, the boys, all these people into the shows that we were creating in high school. And then that's where it really took off. Ended up making hundreds of YouTube videos, two feature length films, which are two hours long. And then one that was 45 minutes, which on the last video we made, the two last videos we made, we actually hired people to do CGI. So we mm-hmm. actually got pretty, pretty into it. Yeah. And that's how I had humble beginnings. Um, just putting like little tiger marionettes yeah. and we'd stage fights and like put that's Rob crazy. Zombie music on. That, yeah, I didn't know that's that. That's how it started. I didn't know you started with Chris Holden. I remember, I mean, I've, I've been shown some of the old videos you made with some of the high school boys mm. um, that I am friends with as well um, through just getting to interact with you yeah. on a social basis. So, um, but I didn't know it started with Chris Holden. That's very cool. Do I intend to get back to filmmaking? In graduate school, I barely make enough money to get by. <laughs> And my cameras are outdated, so I filmed on Sony Handycams back in the day. And a person's iPhone now has a way better camera and way better mic than my Sony Handycams do. And I don't really feel like making videos on an iPhone, you know? Something about it to me, somebody who came from filmmaking, and also editing. So in order to get back into a video, I would have to buy a camera, a computer, an editing software... And the hardest bit that people don't know and they don't think about filmmaking is that you have to rely on free help. Yep. You got to have people in the shot. Got to have other people. People helping you press play if you're in the camera. And unless you have the funds to pay people, that's very hard. And you can ask your friends. And both of us are very grateful for every minute that our friends gave us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To make videos. I mean, you still have friends in your videos yep. today. Yep, from the league. They come and help out, and I always say thank you so much. And they're like, oh, it's no big deal. But, I, I mean, it's so hard. It is a big deal. Yeah, it is, yeah. it's such a big deal because I I feel like, you know, sometimes they, they are excited and they want to do it. And sometimes I feel like I'm badgering them mm. to help. You know what I mean? Um, because I'm, especially with some of the videos I make, I'm doing sketches with multiple characters. And it's a lot more exciting of a sketch if there's multiple people versus me in four different outfits, you know? Yeah. So, and I'm, cause I'm sure you've been there as well. 
Right. And so you feel grateful that your friends help. And yep. it's also you feel after a certain point, you feel strange continuing to ask. Mm -hmm. In high school, we got to a point where we were making videos all the time. And I will say that my passion and excitement and willingness to ask people to help out, it drove some of our friends into the ground. And they, they would not come to Hangouts because they would think, oh, wow, we're gonna Buster's going to make us film again. Yeah. And that still haunts me. You know, that was 11 years ago. And I just, I still feel bad for doing that right. to our friends. But it's, can't change that, that past. Yeah. Can't change the past. But so. the, the goal of making videos and having them with friends is that we can go back and watch them. Whenever. Right. And just remember the, the silly times or like, I'll go back through and watch some of the old videos I made in the bloopers. Mm -hmm. And just remember like, oh yeah, I remember that. Like yeah. that was hilarious at the time. Yeah. I have DVDs and... I have videos on external hard drives so that I could never lose all the copies I have of them. Cause That's I, smart. I want to show them to my kids. I want to watch them again when I'm 50. Yeah. You know? Like, hey, look at the silly stuff I recorded back when I was in my teens and 20s. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you and I made a video together. What was that? Like two years now? Mm, at the lake. Yes. Yes, we the did. The lake trip. Yeah. Well, there were some other people involved in that. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes now it's fun to not take it too seriously and just make a video that's for us. Yeah. And just and kind of fun. off the top of the head. Not because really back in the day, we, we were pretty worried about how many videos we could get on YouTube, how popular it could get. Mm -hmm. Now, if I made one, I wouldn't even care. I won't, It'd be for us care at all. and yeah. us only. Yeah. When we were in college, especially trying to grow our club, that was something we were very worried about. Yeah, I was like, oh, we gotta make it so it it pop off on YouTube, go viral, mm -hmm. and, you know, get start making some money off this and all this stuff. And now it's just, yeah, exactly what you said. I make videos for the fantasy league because I want to, right? And they're fun for me to make. Okay, yeah. Well, thank you, Jordan. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, Jordan Zanardelli here. And if you if you would want to reach out, I know you're on Instagram and Twitter, right? Yes, it's at Zaner Delicious. It's um, you can hit me up on there. If you want to talk to me for any reason, uh, it's just uh, Z A N A R delicious. Yeah. In so. case they want a free Red Robin burger, maybe yeah. someday. Yeah, you can. I can let you know about some Red Robin locations in the area, or if there's any Red Robin promotions going on, um, or if you just want some some information about new things with Red Robin. I can okay. let you know about that as well. Sweet. Or if you just want to talk baseball. I'm baseball. always down to talk baseball with people. If you want to debate Rocky stats and, and the the worth of the Texas Rangers, then... Well, they're, 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 in rebuild, they're in rebuilding mode. So all my favorite teams are rebuilding. I love it. Hey, we look forward to tomorrow. <laughs> okay, we're out of here. Do you have an idea or input about a possible future guest on the show? Reach out to us at themoryanoko at gmail.com or just private message us on our Instagram page. I want to say a special thank you to Russell Isaac Long, the man responsible for all the music used here at The Morinoco. Are you looking for a little bit of bonus content in addition to the regular episodes on the show? Look for us out there on the interwebs on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at The Morinoco. Until next time, peace!